Hi, I'd like to quickly show you some test bench parameters that, that might be helpful when you're debugging simulation mismatches of scan patterns. So here I have a, a very small design where I just generated a few patterns just for demonstration purposes and I've saved the uh, both the serial and the parallel test bench and what I'm going to show you is simulation of the serial test bench and then highlight some of the signals in the test bench that uh, you may not be aware of, but they're quite useful for uh, debugging simulations. So I'm going to run my simulation script that just compiles the netlist and design test bench and everything in the libraries. And it, I've also loaded some um, signals that are useful normally for debugging. And you can see here we have uh, a few mismatches to debug. So what we're looking at here is just uh, standard, uh, you know, scan enable um, clocks, and then also the, uh, the actual scan out pin where the failures are being observed, because this is a serial test bench, and then some random uh, flop in the design so that we have some data to look at and actually have something meaningful. So you can see here uh, I can go look at the transcript and find out where the mismatches are happening, and then map that to the, the waveform. But there's a better way of doing that. And uh, what I would recommend is that when you're doing the simulation, so we have the design, basically here's the design level that has all of its instances underneath. What's wrapped around it is the test bench itself. So if we look at the, the test bench, it has uh, signals that we can use. So I'm going to uh, show you all of these that start with an underscore. These are signals that are built by default into the test bench and they're quite useful when you uh, need to debug something. So let's look at some of the more interesting ones to see how they would be helpful for us to find the mismatch location and understand more about what's going on in that. So, and there are a lot of different signals here. I'm just going to show you a few of them, but I encourage you to go back and, and look at those, like some of the other ones, to see if there are uh, some that are more interesting and useful to you. So let's look at um, a chain test, uh, compare fail, uh, cycle count is also useful, um, the pattern number, as well as procedure string, which is probably one of the most uh, useful ones that we'll look at, and then um, also shift count. So let's take those signals, add them to our simulation, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all of these except the procedure string. Uh, let's change all of those to unsigned so we can see the values and then the procedure string is actually ASCII so I'll change that to ASCII so that we can actually read uh, the procedure names so now uh, right off the bat when we're looking at our simulations let me make this a little bit uh, more visible um, you can see the chain test tells us exactly when chain test is active and what's the beginning of our scan patterns so right off the bat we know what's going on there Compare fail tells me ex the exact time when each of the, fit, the mismatches are occurring. So if I zoom in here, you can see the first simulation happens at time 109. And we can actually go back and look at the, uh, the transcript if I scroll back up here. Our first failure happens at time 4370, which is exactly where I just put my cursor. It happens at uh, on pattern 1 and cycle 109. So you can see it's cycle 109. It's happening during pattern number two because they we're unloading the values, but the mismatch actually occurred uh, with pattern one. And additionally, from the signals I've already added, I can see that I can see when the procedure is happening. So this is this is when uh, launch capture events. This is the uh, zoom in here. So this is launch capture. So this is actually when we when the, the failure was was captured, and as we start to shift it out in cycle four. During, unlo during unload of pattern one, uh, we see uh, the actual failure. And that's when it's detected. And then you can also see the shift count. So each of these signals that are in test bench gives me a little bit more information about where the failure is happening. And I can much more easily see just globally here when the, when the failures are happening. I, can, I don't have to go and one by one look at them in this transcript and map that back to my simulation. So, uh, and then I can quickly see, okay, what clocks are being pulsed, what's going on with my other signals, and then jump from one, uh, you know, one mismatch to the next uh, without uh, a lot of effort. So, 
I encourage you to go look at some of these other signals that are in the test bench auto by default and see if they're useful to you but hopefully this gives you some um, uh, some high-level view of these additional things that are already in your test bench uh, and you can use while you're doing your simulation mismatches. Okay, thank you for uh, watching this and hope this was helpful to you.